Hello world. My name is Carmen Von Ayer and I am an electrical engineering student at Grand Valley State University. I participate in a group called the Society of Women Engineers. We work towards creating a community that is geared towards academic, professional, and career success. We offer opportunities to learn professional skills, to learn more about local companies, and to volunteer within the West Michigan engineering community. I chose to become an engineer because of the positive impact I could have on the community around me. Today I'm going to share a little bit of my electrical engineering experience by giving you a short tour of my electrical tackle box. Let's get started. At the very top of my kit I have several resistors of different resistances. It looks like I'm getting low on my supply. Resistors have many functions, one of which is to reduce current flow. Often, resistors are used to protect circuits from drastic current changes that could harm other more complex and expensive components of a circuit. A resistor is specified by its resistance. The combinations of colored bands on the resistors indicate the value of resistance. I also have lots of LEDs and sets of transistors. A transistor can be used as a digital switch or a current or voltage amplifier. These components control the flow within a circuit and compose the logic behind most technology we use today. The iPhone 11 Pro has more than 8 billion transistors. I also keep a Sharpie and a ruler just in case I need to measure or mark anything. Very handy. On the next couple levels, I have a lot of jumper wires that are used for prototyping circuits on breadboards. More advanced types of prototyping circuits can be done on prototype boards. Holes in the same row on a breadboard are called socket strips and electricity can flow through the row as these holes are connected to each other with a conductive metal. The vertical rails on the breadboard called bus strips are also connected by a conductive metal. They supply power and a ground to the circuit. On the green proto board, everything must be soldered to make proper circuit connections. I also keep a stash of batteries just in case I need to power any of my circuits, which is fairly common, and I would do that using a battery pack like this. I also have several different kinds of motors, the first being a DC motor. A DC motor converts electrical energy into mechanical energy using electromagnetic induction. This is a fancy way of saying that the provided voltage creates a current within the motor that is then acted upon by magnets, causing the motor to rotate. I also have a servo or position motor. Servo motors are energy efficient and are often used in remote controlled cars, robots, and airplanes. Servos allow for more mechanical precision. The position of a servo motor is controlled by electrical pulses. The greater the width of the pulse, the greater the angle of rotation. The brains of this kit involve an Arduino. An Arduino board includes a microcontroller that is programmed using Arduino programming language. The board includes ports that can receive information, such as a button press, and process that information to control something else, such as the start of a motor. And an MSP432. The MSP432 is like a raw microcontroller version of the Arduino. There's a lot more information that can be accessed and modified for greater adaptability. The MSP432 also has more ports and more control of components than the Arduino. It is well known for its low power consumption and efficiency. The bottom of my box contains some duct tape and electrical tape and my handy dandy wire strippers. All of these components I showed you today I've used on most projects that I have been involved in at Grand Valley. For example, I use most of these on my robot that I created. See, there's a servo and both of the wheels are controlled by DC motors and the whole system is controlled by our Arduino that is mounted up here. Thanks for listening today and I hope you have a fantastic day.